All right, folks. So we're here at mom's house, and this is my workstation that I've set up to build my trusses. And uh, here you can see the the outline for the original that I traced. And what I did was, you can see that I cut out around here. Um, that's just because the tool that I have to compress the uh, plates, the mending plates, or gang nails, whatever you want to call them, um, it's just a, a ball joint press, or what do you call it, um, when you're replacing uh, U-joints or pressing out your ball joints on a uh, car, um, use this. So it only has so much space that I can go in, so I had to cut out these marks here and I did a little like so the two by one by twos or two by twos or whatever you want to call them for the trusses go here I cut out a little bit too far so I had to put these little plates here because it was getting hard to press down the the mending brackets so that's what I did at least I, I did okay on the top side for all of them but a few of these ones I did it too much so it's been kind of a pain on these lower ones to get them to get pressed in without the clamp going all wonky um, and what I did was I just took a string line on one end and snapped it all the way over so I had a level line and then as I went into the center you can see I went up just a little bit here and here because you want to put a little camber on it I think I went three eight, three eighths of an inch so you can see the snap line here and then I drew a line just above it. So at the center I think it's about 3 8 inch up to put a camber on the bottom of the truss so that when you, you know, put it up it has, you know, a compression to level it out so you don't have a sagging ceiling. So that's the theory on that I suppose. But yeah, there's the table and let me go set up a uh, by two or whatever we have for the roof trusses so as far as the roof trusses I have these set up here these ones I cut to 161 inches long which will be the bottom of the trusses and then the ones that bend over the top are 162 and an eighth uh, to compensate for that bend and what these sticks were I have two by six and I put them, ripped them through the table saw and made them to the length that the originals were. And so here we are. All right, we got our, our bottom truss uh, timber, whatever you want to call it, truss piece uh, set up in there. So I'll lay it in there and I'll clamp it to the brackets to give it that little camber there in the middle and then we'll set up our center pieces next all right so we just set those up and we'll just lay them there I'd, I'd marked from the original template of one from the house so you can see the marks there and so on and so forth now we'll put the top board up. All right, we got the top board in place, and I just kind of lay it on there. I put a clamp here to just hold it in the center, and then I use these compression clamps to just uh, bring it into you know shape, and just hold them there. And we'll put a mending bracket here, and then on each one of the center pieces. And you can see I did it on this side too. So let's put those mending brackets on, clamp them in, you know, compress them down with my uh, impact driver and this C clamp and these pieces of metal. And there's the uh, center piece uh, mending plates. And do one side at a time and put all of them on there, flip it over and repeat the process. Good times.
hey, I just wanted to give you guys a you know little note on my project here. Just wanted to say in general, and it actually just goes for my channel as a whole, not meant to be a how-to channel, more of a how-I-do channel. Um, so yeah, don't take my advice on how to how to make things. Maybe take some notes on how not to do things, or you know, just give you some ideas. But in general, this isn't the best way to make a roof truss. And these nail plates that I'm putting in here. They look like the ones you can buy at the Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or, you know, any hardware store. But the ones you get there are not certified for structural uh, applications. I was able to get these through a re reseller online. But in general, you have to be a you know, trust company or an engineer or a contractor to even get a hold of these things uh, to make uh, structural connections. But So, yeah don't do what i'm doing kids so and, and for diys you can make um gussets which is basically a uh, plywood base that goes around or a template that goes around uh, basically the areas that i'm putting the nail plates on but they'll be much bigger because obviously it's just plywood but that'll that'll hold your you know shape give it some structural stability and uh, it'll, it'll weigh a bit more, but it definitely would be a much faster process. Uh, I'd say this took me probably a month and a half of a few hours here and there after work to make these. And I made about 54 of them. And uh, so the gussets would have been a much faster process, but I had already purchased all these uh, nail plates and they weren't cheap. So figured I'd do this. And uh, I think my neighbors would have, my mom's neighbors would have been much happier if I did the uh, gussets with the plywood because that impact gun was uh, pretty loud. Uh, but I tell you what, for a Harbor Freight impact gun, it, it performed uh, super well. I was really impressed. So five stars for that. But anyway, so just some notes on that. Don't do it how I did it. Um, but hopefully, I, I think I did a good job. And my neighbor, who is a contractor, was pretty impressed. So yeah and it really it's just a mobile home roof and you see how small it is it's not needing to hold up a lot of weight but uh you know, don't want it falling down like my old ones did and there you go hope it was a fun video to watch and we're back down here and you'll get to see the finished product here in a sec all right anyway always appreciate you guys uh, take care